welcome to the show, where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Rate and review the show at kevinmd.com slash rate. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash follow. Today in the show, we have Gail Miller. She's a life and wellness coach and a maternal fetal medicine physician. Her Kevin MD article, which we'll talk about today, is titled, If It's Not Clinically Pertinent, Then Stay Out of My Uterus. Gail, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. We'll get into your article in a little bit. First off, briefly share your story and journey to where you are today. All right. So I am a maternal fetal medicine physician. For those who aren't familiar, that means I am a high-risk obstetrician. And, you know, I, like so many other doctors, got to this place of I don't like to use the word burnout because it feels like it's something intrinsic within us mm -hmm. as opposed to the system. Just, you know, like everybody else, schedules that are not, you know, that just are not doable, safety issues because of admin that doesn't really understand clinical things. And so I was for quite a long time trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself. I needed to do something different. I found life coaching, which was immensely helpful for me clinically, but I also reflected back on my journey of healing from being childless, not by choice. And, you know, look, went back over like what I went through to, to walk that path and realized life coaching can be so helpful for that. And I wish that I had had that when I was, you know, going through that healing process and the grief and so I decided this is what I need to do. I, I found my calling. And so I became a life coach. I be, got certified and I continued to, to go through other courses, you know, just like in medicine, continue education. And so that is now what I'm doing. I do still do some clinical work. I, I work part-time as a locum physician and now going from working, helping women who have conceived to helping women who are not able to conceive. So you are a maternal fetal medicine physician. You do a lot of high risk OB. And I think that sounds very, very stressful. And I think that burnout is something that is certainly prevalent among, of course, all physicians, but perhaps more so to that field. And you mentioned life coaching as a way out of it. So tell me specifically, how did life coaching, what exactly did life coaching do to, to help you through those times where you did feel burnt out? So the, the biggest thing I think was looking at is we talk about how our thoughts create our feelings and that's how, you know, create our actions and our results. And for me, it was just, it's shined such a light on my own thoughts about things. And so it was starting with that, learning how to set boundaries and then also recognizing that, you know, my, just because I'm a doctor doesn't mean I can't do anything else. I had this mindset of this is all I can do in life. This is all I was trained for. <laughs> so it helped me open my eyes to what I was thinking, both in terms of how I was functioning clinically, learning how to set boundaries and recognizing that there's more to me than just being a doctor. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about your Kevin MD article it's titled, If It's Not Clinically Pertinent, Then Stay Out of My Uterus. Now, for those of you who get a chance to read your article, just walk my audience through it, share the story why you decided to write it. Sure. So I've heard over the years, you know, as a clinician, hear from women who've had pregnancy losses, and they would tell me their stories of, of things that people would say to them in general, and then also within the healthcare system, things like women who've had miscarriages and, oh, you know, it was no big deal, at least, you know, it was early. And women who've had stillbirths late in the pregnancy and hearing comments like, you know, oh, well, at least you didn't have the child and have health problems. And their feelings were minimized. And there's a story after story about hearing that no one understood and recognized the significant psychological impact 
the impact of pregnancy loss, the impact of, of infertility. Even once you get pregnant, you're still grieving that process that you went through of infertility. And so, you know, over the years, in my mind, I collected these, these stories, if you will, and now working with women, now myself being childless, not by choice, and working with women who are in the same situation, again, hearing story after story about comments from people within the healthcare system, and this lack of understanding of how we judge women by fertility status. And there's just this kind of disconnect or not an understanding of the impact on our lives. And so I, again, I've carried th these stories with me. And then I heard from someone who, one of the women that I talk about in the story, in the article, and I, it was someone who, she's a physician, she went to urgent care, she had two kids, she and her husband really wanted a third child because of their personal situation they decided not to. And this, she went to urgent care, I think it was for back pain. And the physician brought up, why don't you have three kids? And you're going to be sorry that you don't have a third. Hmm. And here's this woman who knows the system and was so taken aback. And so at a loss for words, like just tongue tied that she could not advocate for herself and say, this is not okay. And so that's when I was like, okay, I need to like really put all these stories that I've heard and, and gather some more, which are unfortunately endless, of the judgment that women feel and experience during, in healthcare and how it affects their health, it affects their care and their desire to move forward and see physicians or go for healthcare visits. And I decided that I need to, I need to put these stories in and really try to advocate for my clients and for my patients and for all women regarding this, this issue. So tell us more stories, because one of the things that you mentioned was that the feelings surrounding pregnancy loss were minimized. So yeah. Help us understand. Tell us some more of these stories that really bring to light some of the issues that you talk about. So I was very fortunate when I was a resident. I had a fabulous attending who was reproductive endocrinologist, and he had such a, a great understanding of this, the psychology behind this, and said, you know, when once you get that positive pregnancy test, You've already imagined, you know, your delivery, childhood, you know, you've did imagined the whole life of your child. So when you have a miscarriage, it's you, you have lost that whole life of a child that you, and a, you know, your own life plan. And so the stories that I've heard were from women who had experienced you know, miscarriage, we'll say, and would come in just devastated. This was before I did my fellowship, so I'm still taking care of women, you know, in general, OBGYN, and coming in with stories of people minimizing and saying, you know, it's no big deal that you had a miscarriage. It was early. It's first trimester. It's no big deal. And then to make it matters worse, they would bring stories of other physicians saying these things, you know, really kind of invalidating this, this sense of loss. And I have the same similar situations with later losses later in pregnancy. I have friends who have gone through fertility issues and didn't have a loss, but, you know, went through multiple rounds of IVF, finally got pregnant and they're still grieving that process that they went through, the, the difficulty of something that you think is you know, natural and mm -hmm. should happen easily, conceiving pregnancy, and it doesn't. And they have, again, within the healthcare system, at different levels, it's not just physicians, but comments and questions that are hurtful, inappropriate, 
really a lack of understanding that, yeah, they're pregnant now and they're very excited, also nervous, but also there's that element of grief for what they have gone through. And they may never, ever get, you know, you may have a triggers later on in life. It may be something that you never get over, but we expect women to get over it. So what are some things that we should not do in the exam room for those you know, urgent care physicians, primary care physicians like myself, physicians who aren't normally exposed to situations like the one that you described? And what are some things that we, that we should not do or say in the exam room? Okay. Well, I think I would step back and first just remind people that the decision to have a child or not have a child is the most personal decision anyone can make. So I think it's first stepping back and being like, should I ask a question about something mm -hmm. that is so personal, whether it's within between a couple or a single person wanting to have a child. So I think that's where you start from that, that point of view where, okay, this is really personal. Is it my business? And then it's to think about, okay, is this clinically Pertinent. So yes, if you're going to be prescribing a medication to someone who is potentially trying to conceive, that is appropriate to ask. But what I would not, if it's not pertinent, you know, you have that negative pregnancy test, you're giving them something that's not going to be a problem for pregnancy. And it, this has not, what's going on has nothing to do with getting pregnant or being pregnant. I would say, stay away from that. <laughs> stay away from that. Now, you know, if you are someone who your primary care, and this is part of their care, of course, getting their history, their reproductive history, what I say is to stay away from the judgmental comments. Is ask the questions that are clinically pertinent, but don't put your own judgment on it. Well, you know, you should have this many kids, or you're going to, or for the women who have chosen not to have children, you know, the comments that you're going to regret having children, mm. that's not really your place to, to comment on. So I, I want to make clear, this is also about, I'm also advocating for those women who have made the choice. They don't want children. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are someone who wants children, don't impose your viewpoint and your, your, decisions on them. So that's what I would say. I think really step back and think about, does this, is this really appropriate to talk about? And then if so, you know, ask in ways that are, are non-judgmental and what is needed for your care. Now, if someone was the recipient of one of those comments that were less than appropriate, how would you advise that they respond? So I really, it's a, I do this on an individual basis with, with women. It is first because we all come to things with different abilities to speak up. And so I to always tell them the first thing to do is pause, take a deep breath, and then go from there. And it, there are simple answers that are, make it very clear. I don't want to go down this road. So my go-to is always, that's personal. Mm -hmm. And for most people, you know, when somebody says that, you get it. Oh, I shouldn't have gone there. Yes, you have the occasional person who's like, yeah, no, I'm going to keep asking. And, you know, what I remind people is you are being asked something that's not appropriate or you're being hearing a comment that's hurtful. It is okay to stand up for yourself. You don't have to be rude and disrespectful in response, but it is okay when someone pushes that boundary to simply say, that's not okay for you to say, it's not okay for you to ask. If you're, some, if you're with someone you feel like would benefit or can listen to you explaining why it's not okay, then go ahead and do that. If you're getting the sense that, you know, this person's really not going to get it, I, I would say just leave it at not okay to ask me that. That wasn't okay to say. Or if if you're just not comfortable, I say stick with it, take a deep breath and stay silent and just move on. We're talking to Gail Miller. 
She is a life and wellness coach and a maternal fetal medicine physician. We're talking about her latest Kevin MD article that's titled, If It's Not Clinically Pertinent, Then Stay Out of My Uterus. Gail, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? So one is to, again, remember, again, this is just the, the most personal decision someone can make. So really stop and think, does this benefit this clinical care in any way if I bring this up? If it is a situation where it's appropriate and you find someone who's struggling, whether it's with fertility issues, being childless, there are resources. There's a lot of coaches and therapists who now specialize in you know, situations, whether it's someone who's going through fertility, went through infertility, or being childless not by choice. The other take-home message is that IVF is not the answer for everyone. And I'm, I have found, I'm surprised to see how many people within healthcare think that's just the go-to and perfect solution for everyone. So that's another message that I would like people to understand. It doesn't work for everyone. It's not financially feasible for everyone. And even for those that you know can afford it, it doesn't work for everyone. So please don't make the assumption that you know, oh, you can just have IVF and you'll get pregnant. Gail, thank you so much for sharing your story, time, and insight. Thanks again for being on the show. Thanks for having me. 